All right, we got our aluminum block valve here that we've been having a little bit of trouble with. I'm pretty sure that the problem is with the broken pressure reduction cartridge that we can't seem to get out. We pissed around and played with the pressures and made sure we knew where we were adjusting pressures. This relief valve here, that one, is the one you set, and that sets up your pressures for your tip pan return. You saw a bar return and something else, I can't remember, but that's at 500 pounds. Your main relief, which is on the other side. Okay, and then this is the main relief valve, adjustable there. That's going to set your pressure for your conveyor up down, or live deck in and out, conveyor up down, and conveyor forward reverse, which we're having problems with. But I think the most of the problem is we're leaking oil here at this broken valve. So we have to figure out a way of getting that broken piece out of there. I don't really want to take the valve out because that's just going to cause me more troubles. Because there's a lot of lines I'm going to end up hooking up wrong. I can get it straightened out, but it's just going to be a pain in the ass. So Bremcorp gave me a couple ideas on how to get that out of there. We'll see if he's a hero or a zero. He's my idea guy. If I can't come up with a bad idea on my own, I'd get with him. And he usually comes up with something for me. So let's see what happens. Okay, here's our issue. This valve here ain't got one of them stuck in it. That screws in there. And the dude from Multitech, Gordy, says that they will sometimes unscrew. Sure shit, Gordy knows the shit. There it is. Unscrewed in there. So we gotta figure out how to get that out of there. We tried last year and gave up. Because what I'm afraid of is there's maybe some piece of shit caught here and we get too aggressive pulling this out and we screw up where the seals go, separating the passages. And then we're going to leak from passage to passage, making that block possibly junk. So there's my big fear. Well, if we can screw shit up, it's usually done here. All right, we got the spool out of there. Took a 5 16 18 tap, screwed in there as far as we could get it. Clamped it to a vice grips. And we got in it with a big old pry bar and pried it out. This is pry bar we used. Came out pretty hard, but it came out just the same. We'll take it a shot, see if it's... Okay, Gordy was right. That one screwed is all our problem. But we did find a broken spring in there too. So that could have been part of our problem. Went to where Smith got a spring that looks pretty close. Be close enough for testing purposes for today. Maybe we'll get the right one from Hydroforce. Probably not. We'll see what happens. four times as much Loctite as we wanted to on there, but get it tightened up. Okay, we're working on our valve here. We got the pilot pressure, I guess which what you call it, set at 500 pounds and we're able to adjust that easily. The main pressure which we need for the conveyor to work, we can only get a thousand pounds out of that. And I guess we think we must have a bad relief valve. So maybe we'll try to shim the spring, see if that is the problem. Or I don't know. I have to call Multitech tomorrow. Okay, we determined we had a problem with this pump section, which is basically this outlet here. It's a double outlet pump. 
if you can see that. This one goes to aluminum block, this one goes to joystick controls. Both pump sections I learned from Gordy are both the same, so you can flip flop these and check if your pump's bad. I argue with the guy, I'm an asshole, I argue with the guy tell him we got brand new pumps on here that pump can't be our problem he tells me over his years he's put a lot of brand new bad pumps on or parts on stuff so we did finally quit arguing with him did what he said and voila we got 2,000 pounds on our aluminum block no problem actually we had the relief set up too high we blew our gauge up but anyhow that did the trick took this apart we found Bad seals in there from where the guy that worked on it last time took it apart. Okay, we took our pump apart that would only make a thousand PSI and we found this seal in there failed. It's an end plate seal and then it's backed up with this plastic washer or plastic, it ain't a washer, it's a plastic backup ring or nylon and they both were split in half. I'm assuming the guy that put it together screwed it up. Luckily, he no longer works here. So we put them new in there, put it back together, and we got 2,000 pounds easily built on our relief valve. Got all the hydraulics where it needs to be. Got 2,000 pounds back here at the thing. Conveyor. Got to get a couple lines. Got to get a new shutoff valve here for the carriage travel. Now wants to have that fixed. That's so you don't bend the bar. Can't move in the when the saw bar is down. Okay, our other project here is we got to redo the guard around this cylinder. Basically, it's welded on the three sides of the splitter ram or pad or whatever you want to call it. And when it comes out, it protects a piece of wood from getting flip back over from the splitter or if you would inadvertently drop a piece of wood in there because it comes back so fast it can catch the wood in here and makes a huge mess and this, ra this is uh, rallying back pretty fast when it comes back so it's faster than you can shut it off. So we'll have it uh, about 36 inches long. Shouldn't hit our fittings or nothing. There we are at full stroke on the wedge. We still have an overlap of about four or five inches. So work on that. All right. Well, we push, pull the pusher off here. And we cut off all the broken leftovers. And we got that ready to weld up once we cut out our pieces. We do that stuff. But that's about as far as we got today. Didn't get much done. Okay, there's a little representation of our cylinder and our push plate. We need a guard. And we kind of come up with a guard here. Have a cover on it. Have a side on it. We'll have a couple of stiffeners in there. And then another guard on there and a hole in there to get the pin out in case you gotta take the cylinder off or whatever. And hopefully them ribs will stiffen it all up since we're welding it together. I think it's a pressed piece in a break. It's out of 3 eighths. It's pretty heavy shit. But it's got to be pretty heavy shit for the abuse it could take, I guess. We'll burn that out. Weld that up. Got to double check our dimensions. Make sure we're all cool there before we go wasting a bunch of plate. Okay, we had to scrap the making a new splitter guard. We found the old one. Pretty beat up on this end. This would be the end that would have connected to the wedge before. 
it's all smashed out this is the access to get the pin out of the head so we're gonna flip it around been wearing on something forever it's 3 8 inch so probably these Delrin pieces wore out and it just rubbed or it was broke off and rubbing on who the hell knows what they were doing so we're gonna flip it around trim this end up with a torch to grinder make it look like it ain't so screwed up and then weld it on this end of the head worn that bad you guys who had this before how were hammerheads they just smashed wood with it Okay, there's the splitter guard mounted on there, the way it should be. Basically, it'll come out and throw a piece of wood off. Still won't get caught up in there. We re-welded the little pox on the front of it, help keep the wood from popping off the plate. And the only other thing I saw here is not good. Checking this out. That looks like engine oil in a radiator. So, stay tuned.